Are silicon products safe in contact with food as a replacement for plastics? I think it's a great question. I get uh, asked this a lot because I usually rail against uh, any food in contact with plastic because of leakage of um, you know, phthalates and bisphenols in there. And I did a few videos about this, how uh, problematic those are because you know, the chemicals and, and plastic certainly contribute to infertility and cancer and other diseases. And um, so silicone is one possible replacement for some of these items. Now, are they necessarily safer? I mean, that's a very good question. I think um, when you look at the research, there are certainly compounds in silicone that when, for example, you heat it, that can be traced in contact with food or when they come in contact with a solvent like alcohol or oil. And these um, volatile methyl siloxanes, they call them, these siloxanes and they call anywhere from D3 to D10 and so on, um, these compounds can be traced in um, food and it can be traced in liquids that they're in contact with. However, um, usually um, the amounts are small <clears throat> and we don't know uh, at this point how problematic they are for our health. Whereas for the um, compounds that we find in plastics, those phthalates and bisphenols, we know that they're very damaging. Um, I think when we replace um, uh, plastics, we should really focus on replacing with things like, you know, uh, ceramic or stainless steel or, or wood. And sometimes we can't though, we need something lasting. I'll give you a good example. So for example, um, I have this espresso maker that I use a lot and it has inside here between these two things when you take it apart, it's just a very thin silicone rubber seal. There's not much exposure to that. And that needs to be there. So when the liquid gets heated, you know, it gets the espresso going to where it's supposed to go in the upper compartment there. So I'm much more comfortable having a tiny bit of exposure of this seal. You know, there's a very, very thin possible, you know, uh, uh, segment of that that's exposed to the hot liquid in there, rather than then if this were, for example, real rubber. So I think here the silicone seal is, is fine. Um, heat certainly can cause more of those um, siloxanes to leak into liquid. So that's one thing that we have to consider. But in small amounts, this is probably fine. And then you might know um, uh, cookware a lot of times, yeah, this is a spatula that is made from silicone and they can do with silicone, they can do these wonderful colors and all that. I think that's something that I really wouldn't use because I don't see a need for this. I mean, you can use uh, wooden utensils and wooden utensils, I think, are um, still much safer in contact with food than anything made from silicone. And then uh, we know these things like mouth guards. So um, again, it has been determined at this point that you know even in contact, you know, uh, uh, with uh, with our with our mouth, uh, for example, with a mouth guard, or when we think of baby pacifiers, silicone is thought to be fairly safe. Now, we don't know long-term exposure risks. I would say really yet, and and how much leaks in, and what problems we have. But at this point, at least we think that it's actually not problematic. Again, when you heat it or when you add a solvent like alcohol or an oil, it's a bit of a different story. You have more leaking in. Will this be a problem over time? Not sure. I still think when it comes uh, as a comparison to any plastic or rubber, I think that silicone is much superior. I think it's a much better way to go. Um, should we replace everything with silicone? No, I think the better replacements would be stainless steel, wood, or um, it would be ceramic, of course, you know, but there are certain things where you need a certain elasticity, you can use it. Um, i give you another example. Uh, when you make um, your own ice cream, they have these molds, these silicone molds, and again, then you freeze them and you make your own popsicles, for example. I think that's okay to do because these are cold temperatures, again, at low temperatures, and there's not too much fat in there usually. Um, there's not that much uh, that gets transferred in there. And that's one thing to, to do because otherwise, I mean, it's very difficult to freeze something in, in, in glass that usually cracks, there's, there's issues with that. So all in all, yes, we, and, and I'm gonna link a few studies to this. So we can trace these, you know, volatile methyl siloxanes uh, when we heat or when we use solvents. Um, are they massively problematic? We don't really know yet. I mean, so far we don't have an indication that they cause uh, a lot of problems. But again, I would always minimize things that are, you know, uh, uh, anything that's sort of a rubber or even a silicone as best you can. And I think we have good alternatives. Again, uh, wood, ceramic, stainless steel, glass, these are great uh, alternatives. If you need something flexible like a seal here and there, I think that's absolutely fine. I think baby pacifiers um, and all that and, and chew uh, uh, toys made from silicone are probably okay because again, they're not really heated. I mean, there's not as much exposure long-term in this. 
um, and these should be bit generally be, be fine. So all in all, as a, as a summary, I think silicone can be used as a replacement for plastic. I think at this point, I would argue it is uh, the safer thing to do. I would still minimize it, you know, best things to use again, you know, stainless steel, ceramic, wood, there you can't go wrong.